Hello, dear classmates. Congratulations! You have already finished almost all the basic topics in VLSI testing. Today we are going to enter more advanced topics in VLSI testing. So why am I learning this chapter? Suppose we have already applied a very good test set of 100% for coverage. But we still cannot detect all the defective ICs. So your manager asks you, why can we achieve zero dBm? How can we reduce all the test escapes? Those are very good questions to answer in this chapter. Before we start, we want to quote a famous saying from Confucius. He said that when you have faults, do not fear to abandon them. In the previous chapters, we focused on four models. But now, in this chapter, we are facing the real world. We will look into details of defects. So let's forget about four model for now. So now, let's start this chapter. In chapter 1, we mentioned this Brown and Williams model. If you plug in 100% for coverage, in theory, you should be able to get 0 dPm. But this is not the truth. In practice, for coverage does not represent defect coverage. For a full model, we can calculate the number of faults and also we can force simulate the number of detective four. In this way, we can obtain four coverage. However, in the real world, we don't know how many defects there are in the chip, and we don't even know how many defects are detected by our test. So we actually don't know the defect coverage because the defect behavior cannot be well modeled by our four models. Take the Stanford CRC experiment for example. There are a total of 5.5 thousand chips tested by many different test sets. Among the 116 defective chips, we found that up to 6 of the chips can escape 100% single stock for test set. Here is one possible example of test escape. Suppose we have a high impedance bridging defect in our chip, which can cause abnormally high static current, but it cannot be detected by Boolean testing. So if we want to have very good quality tests, we must understand defect behavior better. So what is a defect? A defect is an unintended physical difference between hardware implementation and its intended design. For example, a piece of an unwanted wire is a defect. So, how does a defect come from? Failure mechanism is the physical or chemical process that causes the defect. For example, a dust particle falling on the wafer can cause this defect. And the failure mode means the causes or possible ways a device can fail. For example, this dust can cause a bridging or open. Or in some cases, we can model the failed device by parametric problem such as threshold voltage VT shift or transistor transconductance change such as R on or R off is increased or decreased. Sometimes they can be modeled as contact resistant or Y resistant increase. In summary, failure mechanism is the cause of defect and the failure mode is the behavior of the defect. So there are 
different terminology for different level of abstraction. Failure mechanism is the physical or chemical process that causes the defect. For example, a dust particle falling on the mask can be a failure mechanism. This failure mechanism can be observed as a open in the metal wire, which is called the failure mode. In the logic circuit level, we model this as a stuck at 1 or a stuck at 0, 4. Finally, in the signal level, we can observe this circuit output an error. So don't get confused with this terminology. Now it's time for you to have a quiz. Which one of the following is a failure mechanism? A. A metal wire is open. B. A particle dust falling on mass. C. A transistor R on is too high. So what is your answer? Yes. A particle dust falling on mass is a physical process that causes the defect. So it's a failure mechanism. In the following slides, we are going to introduce different category of defects. We can classify defects by their occurrence. Random defects are those defects caused by random factors such as particles. On the other hand, systematic defects are caused by deterministic factors such as disagree problems or mask problems. We can also classify defects by their process steps. For example, in the CMOS process, we have oxidation-related defect, metallization defect, wire bonding over stress, or reliability defect. In the following slide, we will briefly introduce the CMOS process-related defects one by one. So first, oxidation-related defects. In the thin oxide process, we can have high electron injection, which is a failure mechanism. The related failure mode can be VT shift or transconductance change. We can also have oxide breakdown failure mechanism, which can be modeled by gay oxide shorts. We can also have ionic contamination, which is modeled by VT shift. We also have thick oxide related defect. Those thick oxides are also called field oxide. In this slide, we are using this notation. On the left hand side of the arrow, it's failure mechanism. On the right hand side, it's the failure mode. Now let's briefly introduce the high electron injection, also known as hard carrier injection. The failure mechanism is that carriers such as electrons gain very high energy from source to drain potential drug. And those electrons, they get such a high energy, so they are able to cross the barrier of the silicon oxide interface and they can be trapped in the oxide. Sometimes they collide some atoms, so the atom become ionized and the electrical charge will be trapped in the interface. This is a more evident phenomena in the NMOS device. So what's the result of high electron injection? It can be VT shift. This chart shows the IV curve before and after hot electron injection. The solid line is higher. That means the control of the current is better. However, after high electron injection, the blue dotted line is 
smaller. That means the control of the current is worse after high electron injection. So this effect can be modeled as VT shift or transconductance change. The second oxide related defect is breakdown. A breakdown means a certain increase in oxide conductance due to high current passing through and the jaw heating cause the oxide to damage. There are three frequent failure mechanisms including pinholes, tunneling effect, and the electrical overstress. We are not going to details about this failure mechanism. The most important thing is that results of oxide breakdown can be modeled as gay oxide short. So what are gay oxide shorts? There are low impedance paths between gate and the silicon. This is the most frequent failure mechanism in the CMOS technology. A gate oxide short can exist between gate and the drain or gate and the source or between gate and the substrate. For different CMOS, they have different model. And the third defect can be ionic contamination. The failure mechanism is there are some mobile ions such as the sodium ions near the surface of the oxide and uh, they can be accumulating in the surface interface. They accumulate over time so the VT is shipped or the leakage current of this device is increased. This was a big problem in the early CMOS process technology. Now let's introduce some defects related to metallization or wire bonding or overstress. The metallization process sometimes is also called back end process. Metallization related defect can be caused by failure mechanisms such as poor lithography patterning which results in open or short in the wire. Chemical mechanical polishing or CMP can be also a failure mechanism or particles, bad via or contacts. Other failure mechanism can be like melting alloying or scratch they can all cause problem in our metal wires sometimes a dust particle can cause a short for example in the old aluminum process we first deposit the aluminum on the silicon surface and then we deposit a layer of photoresist and then we do a lithography expose and then we etch off the photoresist between wires at this stage suppose that there is a particle falling on the device in this way the aluminum under this particle will not be etched so after we finish, we will see a bridging defect or short between two wires. However, for some other process, a particle can also cause open. For example, in the copper process, the damascene process is a very famous process to produce metal copper wires. In the first step, we do an oxidation deposit. And then we put photoresist on top of the oxide. We do an expose and etch the photoresist and the oxide. And in the third step, we will have 
some copper seed layer. Suppose that we have a dust particle falling on the die. Then in the fourth step, when we do a copper deposition, there will be a void that cause open. After we finish the CMP, there will be an open. So from this example, we can see that a particle can either cause a short or open. So the D effect are process dependent. Other metallization defect can come from via or contact formation. For example, incomplete etching or mask problem or particle can cause void in the via. Some other metallization defect can be caused by CMP, chemical mechanical polishing. In this figure, these three metal wires are supposed to be disconnected. However, due to insufficient polishing, they are still connected. So they can cause shorts. After we finish the dye processing, we will need to bond the dye to our package. There are several frequent failure mechanisms caused by poor pad or purple plate or poor pad wire interconnect. This figure shows some package related defect. They can be caused by moisture penetration, mechanical problem, or poor dye attached. So this kind of defect cannot be ignored when we are testing the IC. And uh, even we package a dye without problem, there are still danger of electrical overstress. Electrical overstress can be caused by mistake in our design. A very important failure mechanism is electrostatic discharge (ESD). This is typically caused by careless handling. Because our human body has some electrostatic charge, if we touch the pad of an IC, this charge can damage a logic on our dye. To protect our device, we need to design ESD protection diode in our input so that our charge can be discharged to the power or ground. This photo is a ESD damage device. We cannot ignore this problem. So when we enter the clean room, we need to protect ourselves by wearing ESD clothes. Even we sell the chip, there are still possibility of reliability defect. If you remember in chapter 1, we talked about this reliability curve. This is called a best top curve because of its shape. In the early stage of the product lifetime, we can have infant motility, which can be caused by reliability defects. For transistor devices, we can have several failure mechanisms that cause reliability problems. For example, negative bias temperature instability or NBDI, which can be modeled by VT shift, especially for PMOS devices. We can also have time-dependent gate outside breakdown, or TDDB, which can be modeled as VT shift or increased leakage current. We also have high electron injection. For the wire, we can have failure mechanisms such as electro-migration, 
stress induced voiding or corrosion. For electro migration, the failure mechanism is caused by atom move by electron wind when the current density is too high and the temperature is very hot. So the atoms are actually moved to form hillocks or void. Hillock can cause short and the void can result in open. In summary, we need to understand the behavior and the distribution of the defect so that we can have very good testing. This is a example defect Pareto which shows the distribution of the defect and their category such as metallization, oxidation, packaging over stress and the other defects. Please know that this is just an example. Real defects distribution are process dependent. Now, please have a quiz. Which of the following is not correct? A. Particle can cause both opens and shorts. B. Reliability defect worsen with time. C. Single stuck cap fork can model all kinds of open defects. Okay, have you got it? The answer is C. Single stock cap for model cannot model all kinds of open defect because they have all different behaviors. Now in conclusion, in this video, we have seen so many different defects. So. Even we have 100% full coverage, we cannot guarantee 0 dpm. In this video, we have introduced the concept of failure mechanism, which is the cause of the defect. And the failure mode is the behavior of the defect. And we briefly introduced different defect categories like oxidation, metallization, wire bonding, over stress, and reliability. In conclusion, there are so many different kinds of defects, so it is impossible to model all different defects by simply using a single full model. So we need more advanced test techniques to reduce our DPM effectively.